calcium magnesium metabolism. There is antagonism, as well as cooperation between calcium and magnesium. About half of the total body magnesium is found in bones, and the other half inside the cells of tissues and organs. Only 1% is in the blood, and the kidneys try to keep these levels constant by excreting more or less with the urine. In contrast, 99% of calcium is in bones, and the rest in the fluid outside of cells. Muscles contract when calcium moves into the cells, and they relax when calcium is again pumped out and magnesium moves in. This cellular pump requires much energy to pump calcium out, and if cells are low in energy, then calcium may accumulate inside cells. Low cellular energy may be due to candida, faulty sugar or fat metabolism, deficiencies, or accumulating metabolic wastes and toxins. This then leads to only partial relaxation of the muscles with stiffness, a tendency to cramps, and poor blood and lymph circulation. The problem gets worse the more calcium moves from bones into soft tissue. Nerve cells can also accumulate calcium, leading to faulty nerve transmission, in the lens it causes cataracts, hormonal output keeps reducing as endocrine glands increasingly calcify and all other cells become handicapped in their normal functions. In addition, it causes intracellular magnesium deficiency. Magnesium is needed to activate countless enzymes, and a deficiency leads to inefficient and blocked energy production. A further problem is that excess calcium damages the cell membrane and makes it difficult for nutrients to move in and wastes to move out. When the intracellular calcium level gets too high, the cell will die. Here we can see the importance of boron as a regulator of cell membrane functions, especially in regard to movements of calcium and magnesium. With boron deficiency, too much calcium moves into the cell, while magnesium cannot move inside to displace it. This is the condition of old age and of the boron deficiency diseases leading up to it. While in good health and especially in younger years, a calcium magnesium ratio of 2 to 1 is normal and beneficial, and supplied with a good diet. But with increasing age, boron deficiency, and resulting disease conditions, we need progressively less calcium and more magnesium. For boron to be fully effective in reversing tissue calcification, ample magnesium is required. For elderly individuals, I recommend 400 to 600 mg of magnesium together with the daily borax supplementation spaced out during the day, and with protracted joint problems additional transdermal magnesium. However, oral magnesium may need to be adjusted according to its laxative effect. I am doubtful whether calcium supplements are needed and beneficial, even in case of osteoporosis. In my view these individuals have plenty of calcium stored in soft tissues where it does not belong, and supplementing boron and magnesium is expected to redeposit this misplaced calcium into bones. I regard the medical focus on a high calcium intake as a prescription for accelerated aging.